Hey, this is Naltzer, and this is a look at the late tier Japanese cruisers. At tier 6, we've got the Alba. It has six 203mm guns. It's got 10km range torpedo systems, terrible AA protection, great speed, good maneuverability, great concealment. The armor leaves something to be desired. So you can see the Citadel poking through. It's that little yellow bit. The torpedo bulge doesn't really protect it all that well, and if you show your broadside, you will take citadels and you will die. But the package of the Alba allows you to play somewhat like a destroyer. If you had a great commander, you could actually launch your torpedoes undetected. In doing so, you could do a ton of damage. These are Japanese destroyer torpedoes. They wallop people. Two of them will easily kill any same tier cruiser. Great accuracy of the guns, in my opinion. HE is fantastic. Use AP in a broadside scenario. The rate of fire is probably slower than anyone else at this term, but it's usable. The damage per shot is high enough that you don't really feel the rate of fire deficiency. And my normal build for this would include Priority Target, Expert Marksman, because they do traverse pretty slow, Demolition Expert to improve the HE further, and Concealment. That's the base build, and you can go whatever direction you want to go with it after the fact. At Tier 7, we've got the Miyoko. The Miyoko has 10 203mm guns, so it adds 4. It adds 2 launchers compared to the Alba. That's one issue with the Alba 2, it only has 1 launcher per side. This has 2 per side. Terrible AA protection, great speed, good maneuverability, good concealment, and easily citadel. Sound familiar? The Japanese cruisers maintain this particular archetype for the rest of the way. And that's not a bad thing. It is a super solid line to go down. Destroyers will hate you, battleships will hate you, and some cruisers will hate you. Aircraft carrier, they will laugh at you though. So keep that in mind. You are definitely a target, or you're not even considered a threat to aircraft carrier that might sail around you. So keep that in mind. They'll do whatever they want because you don't have any anything to solve it. Again, same sort of build. Priority target, expert marksman, demolition expert concealment. That is just the, the core initial build on every Japanese cruiser. It shores up your ability to perceive the threat, obviously, with priority target. The turrets are going to traverse faster because they need to. They don't traverse as fast as you want. Demolition Expert, HE's better. Concealment allows you to really get into a position where you can ambush those destroyers. You can hide from the enemy if you need to. And the two extra gun turrets is really appreciated. This really boosts this to a level that is noticeable compared to the Alba. And it's really nice. Miyoko, super, super solid. There's been about six or seven copycats of this put in the game, and there's not a bad reason for that. It works, it works, it works. At tier eight, we've got the Mogami. Now, this is the most interesting, in my opinion, because it has a weird gun loadout. 155 millimeters is one of the two options, and I would not touch the 203s with the 155s being available. Same sort of torpedo systems, terrible AA protection, speed, maneuverability, concealment, yada yada yada, you know it. The Citadel is still poking through, and you still have the butt torpedoes. But, 155mm guns is so ridiculously strong against destroyers, cruisers, battleships, that even as the bottom tier... You should expect to do at least 100,000, 200,000, if you're given the chance. You can't do this out in the open. You don't have the ability to tank. But with Inertia Fuse High Explosive, you should get six to 7,000 salvos on the enemy per salvo. Rate of fire is pretty fair, honestly, because it's a smaller caliber than 203. The one thing you give up on is your AP potential. I would not recommend loading AP with the 155mm variant unless you get a perfect scenario, absolutely perfect. It's much safer and much higher damage to use the HE along with Inertia Fuse High Explosive. And I know that's an expensive build, not sir, but Inertia Fuse is so perfect for 155 and 152 who meet high tier battleships. 
high tier cruisers. It allows you to pass two thresholds, the 27 millimeter bow that about half of the cruisers have and the 32 millimeter bow of the high tier battleships. That will allow your HE to not shatter on those particular sections. And that's a really big damage boost, really big. At tier 8 again, we've got the premium Atago. This has the 203s, so back to 10 203s. The range is basically in the same ballpark. We've got the same sort of torpedo systems, however, with a twist. Terrible, terrible AA protection. Great speed, great maneuverability, great concealment. Citadels, you know, easily citadeled. But what you're getting with the Alba, which you're not getting with pretty much any other Japanese cruiser, is you get forward launching torpedoes and you get a heal. Of course, tier nine and 10, you get that too, but this is tier eight. You get it one tier earlier. This is one of the best premiums in the game because of all those stats. Burn the crap out of your enemies, send torpedoes forward. So there's always a threat. There's not a telltale of a perfect broadside or a stern showing from a Japanese that says, oh yeah, they, they sent torpedoes. No, that's not here. He could easily send torpedoes in a forward angled position and you wouldn't really know it because he's trying to reload very long it's 13 14 seconds so there's plenty of time for him to send his torpedoes and for the normal gun cooldown to occur so when you look at a rate of fire don't look at it like oh man this is limiting my potential output it actually works in your favor when you're trying to dip in and hide the fact that you're using something else on the ship. It's within your regular rotation to not be firing because you're reloading. Use those torpedoes. I'm really bad about not using my torpedoes as often as I should, but if you're actually good at the game, unlike me, you should have no problem at all finding success in your Japanese cruiser, and the Atago is a great example of why the Japanese cruisers will always be relevant in my opinion, it was one of my first purchases and I don't regret it at all. At tier nine, we've got the Ibuki. Now, initially this was a piece of crap, extremely slow tra traverse. You know, it, it had to compete with a lot of great ships at tier nine, at tier 10, at tier eight. It's got the 10 203s. It's got the 16 torpedo systems at 10 kilometer range, terrible AA protection, 35 knots in the water. Maneuverability, concealment, yada yada yada. They improved the turret traverse speed a bunch. The range is fantastic with the range mod, and you can burn the crap out of enemies. Plus, AP on a broadside target is pretty damn good. And you're gonna see right here why it's so good. So the editor is obviously showing a perfect broadside. This is when you want to do it. If you feel like the player is trending towards broad, get that AP loaded and punish the crap out of him. Good accurate guns, and the turret traverse is honestly right there with everything that needs to be at its tier now. It's not ludicrously bad. And I've seen people say, why don't you go rate of fire? You know, well, you know, that contributes to slowing down the turret traverse, and I'm more of a player that really likes to maneuver. Plus, the butt torpedoes. We gotta talk about butt torpedoes. It's still a thing, and slow turret traverse really works against your maneuverability. So anything that takes away from that, honestly, I would avoid. If you feel like the turrets traverse too slow for you, I might even recommend picking up that faster turret traverse module. You would be swapping out your accuracy module. However, it would feel better for someone who expects them to be faster. You're gonna give up a little rate of fire, but 5% isn't that much. It could be the difference between living and dying, but again, not that much, not sir. You get the idea. Ibuki, it's a solid ship. It's not gonna blow anyone's doors off. Speaking of doors being blown off, the Zhao, tier 10 monster, in my opinion. Four by three, so a little bit different setup. You've got great range. The torpedoes lose a little distance, but they gain a ton of speed. AA protection is okay. It's not completely garbage like the previous ones. It's okay. Speed's good. Concealment's great. The Citadel is easily penetrated. And uh, 
I'll show you an example of that. And again, my build's very straightforward. I go for the range. I do feel like range benefits me more because people can hit you at 15 kilometers pretty easily. It's much harder at 17 and 18 kilometers for the enemy to hit you unless you're terrible. And you'll see a good example of that in a, in a, in a sec. And the Zhao, for the longest time, was notorious for having a massive stealth firing window. That is no longer the case. That might discourage you from picking up the range module. And I would say that's okay. It, you know, I don't make these videos to tell you how to play necessarily. I just want to communicate what I'm thinking so you can make a choice that is informed. If I were to not comment on my strategy, then you would just have to try and infer it. And I think that would detract from the potential gains from the video or the comment I made or just what you, you feel the ship's identity should be. And I just hope that you get enough from this that you can say, okay, well, you know what, not sir, I really don't like Vigilance or Direction Center or Adrenal Rush. Hey, that's fine with me. However, Expert Marksman, Priority Target, Demolition Expert, Concealment, I will stand by that. That is the required initial 10 scale build. That is just every Japanese cruiser deals with slow turret traverse. It is easy to sit so you want to hide as often as you can. You want to burn the crap out of them. And Priority Target is just a global take on anything that's going to potentially take long range damage. And let's face it, every cruiser is going to take long range damage. But overall, Japanese cruiser line, super solid. One of my first lines that I reached tier 10 with. I really enjoyed it then, I really enjoy it now. Just remember to not make the simple mistake of playing it broadside on a Grosse Kua first. I'm happy that he punished me because I made a mistake and it's a learning experience for you. Hopefully you don't make the same. I'm not afraid to show my failure, I'm human. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will catch you next time.